Hello. <laughs> so how are you guys all good yeah we're yeah. good how are you i'm good just yeah. a bit tired but i'm okay yeah we're all a little bit tired <laughs> you're it's holding Sunday. up pretty good today you're, yeah. you're holding up quite well so yeah. <laughs> that's what it's all about yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Who are you? I'm, uh, I'm Gigi Karma. This is Edgy V. Hi, I'm Edgy V. So she's the rapper. I'm the vocalist um, of the hip hop duo that is Edgy V and Gigi Karma. Um, so that's the two counterparts. Yeah. Bouncing off each other. Yeah, energetically. and uh, I know some people like don't know this, but we are actually twins. We do look alike, but some people would be like maybe sisters. Uh, we used to look a lot more alike, but now we have our own styles, as you can see. Yes, we so do. So we're a twin hip hop duo. Yeah, it's me and Gigi Karma. Sexual assault is the meaning of the perpetrator's non-sexual needs for power, domination, and their expression of anger rather than sexual gratification. <laughs> so viewers, uh, I'm curious about one thing now. Yes. When did you discover that talent that you have, like with singing? Like, uh, you had any influence at home, or was some band that influenced you? Well, we started listening to a lot of hip hop music, and it was very much influenced, influential amongst our friend group. Yes. Um, Definitely by our influence by our friends group very heavily. Yeah, and then um, we actually, so we would have been disconnected with making music at the time, but then we had a loss in our family. Yeah, um, we, we lost our dad at the age of 17, and that's when we decided to get back into music as a way to process a lot of the things. Because when you're when you're this young and you're always kind of protected by the world. Um, from the world by your parents and you have no idea of all the other bad stuff that's out there because you're that young and you're still kind of very much protected and unaware so when that happened it was a very big shock to us um, as a family and um, as, as, as a to person our system, to, yeah. to ourselves yeah to our nervous system and having to deal with that so young and it now a lot of grief to process wasn't there yeah and not really knowing that like oh my god stuff like this actually happens and you can you know our dad was always like very healthy and strong man and he was only like age of 42 so you never really thought you that like it's him that's gonna go first you know and so that was a lot of stuff to have to experience and that's when we decided to come back into music to to process our emotions yeah right and the music was still full of a lot of pain at the time because the that's literally the pain coming out and the grief coming out and uh, that's when you know things kind of started to clear that we started to focus on the process of actually performance then and, and say, you know, there's so much pain in the world and so much suffering that maybe we want to just have some fun more now on stage and, and how can we do that? How can we have a better stage presence? How can the music be a little more catchy and kind of basically start to have fun as we move past that stage of our lives? Yeah, and to get like really interacting uh, with our creative side and what we want to say and what our message is and you know as sort of like women standing in the music industry um, in a way and especially hip-hop mm -hmm. so that would have been kind of intense at first because it is a scary thing mm -hmm. it's like one moment people just know you as a regular person and then the next thing you're like oh I want to be a musician now <laughs> you know and, and it's kind of like bursting that illusion for a lot of people that perception that they might have had of you um, and then all of, a, all of a sudden you kind of nearly have to prove yourself at mm -hmm. first mm. but then you go through this like journey of processing you're like actually I don't need to prove myself to anyone I'm doing this only for myself because I love the creative the creativity and the impact that music can have on other people well actually we can bring a very different flavor to the table not only you know doesn't mean we can't rap about these things but we can rap about so much more because it's almost there's so much more freedom being a female in the raps in the rap game in the rap scene and 
Uh, we've, we've had a lot of fun with that. I wrote a lot of music about actually, you know, my relationships, my previous relationships. But we have a lot of music about other stuff. You know, we talk, we, we don't mind going to the parts about the world that's like very socially taboo to discuss. So we've written songs about like the rape kind of culture and what like what happens and the pain of that experience not that's that's something we experience ourselves luckily but um, we felt like there's there's so many things out there that people are scared to talk about and yeah and we've chosen to talk about any other kind of topics so we've we kind of we've uh, had a song about called chrysalis about uh, the gay co the, the gay community as well and kind of like how you know sometimes uh, someone's okay to be out there and, and loving someone where they fall in love with someone who doesn't want to be out there and who doesn't want to be out of the closet and things like that so you know it's like we want to kind of connect to people in very different ways um, yeah and not be afraid to kind of um, also learn a lot about the world through that process as well ourselves because it's like well we don't know much about that but I'd like to learn more and that's our way of connecting and, and many people actually have come forward when they've heard some of those different songs that touch on those very taboo topics we had people approach us and sharing their very personal vulnerable life stories which is crazy like to think that that opened that kind of it created this open space for someone to actually approach and say, share these very vulnerable parts that maybe they've never even talked about before never yeah. thought that they could yeah. and that's powerful yeah that's powerful uh, i think thing. i think that song we wrote um about like uh, like rape culture and just like sexual harassment in general and uh, it was called Thief in the Night and I just remember like that like vulnerability you feel on stage because you're really you're really like poking the monster in the eye a little bit and mm -hmm. it's like it like I don't know it, it opens up this very strange strange energy in the room because it's like it's one of those things that people don't like to openly speak about mm -hmm. and you're really like you're really like shouting at people's faces with this subject and you're like look at it you know like this is this is the issue this with is our real. society like this mm -hmm. is something that needs our attention so it's kind of like you kind of have to be a little bit badass about it and, and sort of not be scared because there's so many people that get affected by this and like there's been girls that literally have approached us with their stories and it was it was actually very sad you know to hear and but they even said to us they were like it's so beautiful to see other women speak about this issue because they know how it directly affects us so it's like giving a voice to those that are directly affected by something so big um, yeah, we've been approached by like Galway Feminist Collective as well when they heard mm -hmm. our, our our set at um, uh, uh, our first festival that we ever performed at, which was Eru, the Irish Burning Man. And oh, that's nice. actually how we got one of our gigs is because of the music and the lyrics and the content that it represented and how we kind of had created this voice for, for females and women and just in general, like I said, opening discussions at people don't normally talk about and remember we got brought over to Galway and we got to stay there for the night and we got you know a booked gig out of that and we got to be part of an amazing group of women that we got to meet and, and actually share our lyrics on the night that was that was crazy that was really yeah. cool yeah mm -hmm. yeah I remember reading a poem that night as well yeah yeah because I, I kind of write poetry so it's not just like lyrics that I write but like I suppose poetry is it's, like yeah. lyrics without the melody really uh -huh. yeah but um, I, I just like the delivery of a poem as well because it can also have like a whole other kind of feel to it with the way that you can deliver the idea, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we already covered a good bit of the ground yeah. today. Yeah, that's good. I'm really happy. Get a nice little walkie zen. <laughs> a bit of exercise and fresh air. Two birds on stone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Getting so much fresh air. I'm like super giddy now because there's like so much oxygen. Natural high, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be some new music and surprises and other bonus tracks that we don't want to give too much away. Uh, but we're very excited to finally release this project and then move on to other amazing things. And yeah, um, like I said, many collabs on the way, some solo projects. There's going to be some out. remixes of the tracks as remixes well. Remixes of the tracks. Well, well, we're not going to say too much about that. But we can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like to keep a little bit of mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. my my uh, Instagram is uh, double G Karma with a C, so G G Karma, mm -hmm. and and I'm EGV on Instagram, but my full name is like Agla Valnite dot Agla Valnite, but you can easily find me if you just put in EGV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Like I don't know the right thing to do as the you running off to spend time with your old crew as we lose.